Hello, Artist Cadet. Welcome to Background Boot Camp. I am Perry Pictures, and I will be your drill instructor for this course, of which there are three difficulty levels, easy, medium, and hard. Do I make myself clear? I like it. Great, because this video will cover difficulty level hard, so you can draw complex backgrounds. And for the sake of this video, we will call this Advanced Mode. If you haven't already watched Background Boot Camp Easy and Intermediate Modes, I will post info cards and a link in the description to both of them. Now onward to Background Boot Camp Advanced Mode. Are you ready? Yes, yes, yes! Kicking this off with the first two major tips. Firstly, plan your background before drawing your characters, and secondly, reference, reference, reference. This example on screen was a commission I drew with a very specific setting in mind for the commissioner that involved a grand staircase entrance to an illustrious academic establishment. If you watched Background Bootcamp Intermediate, then you know that industrial spaces are much less forgiving than organic spaces like a park or scenic overlook when it comes to inaccuracies. That in mind, you will see me using a lot of rulers and symmetry tools throughout this process. Which is why my next tip is to arm yourself with the right tools. While I won't be spending a lot of time talking about perspective grids, simply because I do not feel qualified enough on those, perspective is still very important and I will advise you to the best of my ability with tips on what I have done and used that has helped me. And one more time, let me lament on the value of reference material. Without references for wood paneling walls, I would have left these walls bare instead and missed out on a really cool texture and detail that adds a lot of character and dimension to this setting. Tip number four is to look for patterns. Repetition will do two things for your backgrounds. It will add detail to your environment and it will add motility and rhythm when used properly. That's why I suggest looking for patterns rather than simply saying, hey, use patterns. Patterns used simply for the sake of patterns can actually clutter and confuse your artwork. The key here is to look for repeating shapes that are balanced and purposeful, even if the purpose turns out to be to create balance. Mind boggling, I know, but hopefully this helps. When you're not going all out on the perspective grids, another way you can check your perspective is with a technique I'll call perspective by relationship. And I use a lot of that in this piece. Essentially, I would use the other objects or characters in my scene to measure another object that I want to add to the drawing. For example, the characters advancing up the stairs were sized based on how tall they stood next to the banister. That helped me keep my ratios consistent as I placed them all the way up and down the stairs. Another example is how I drew the arch doorway too short on the lower level, and one way I was able to catch this issue was by looking at how it measured in relationship to the tallest character at the bottom of the left stairway. Seeing this, I knew I needed to make the door much taller, and if I'd been smarter about this when I drew it, I would have also compared the lower level door in relationship to the upper level door and noticed that the arched paneling above it should be aligned with the arches in the wall paneling. Moral to the story, if you are using this perspective relationship tip, use more than one point of reference to measure the ratio of objects in relation to each other. My sixth tip is to show your 3D edges. Early on in our art journeys, we like to flatten and simplify three-dimensional objects into a flat imitation. When pushing ourselves to make more advanced background drawings, we do ourselves a disservice by leaning into this habit. Looking up at the ceiling, you will hopefully see that I added in 3D edges for my ceiling beams. If you look left to right across the beams, you can tell, especially in the very center, that the angle of the beam we're seeing depends on where it is in relation to our point of view. This is perspective in practice with 3D rendering, and I urge you to try this too with your next complex background drawing. If you are interested in watching a coloring tutorial, I've got you covered and will link both my digital coloring and digital shading videos in the description down below. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know you liked it by hitting the thumbs up button, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I am creating new art and animation on my channel all the time, a lot of which are tutorials just like this one. Congrats, you've completed Background Bootcamp. Now go forth and make advanced background art.